Inflammatory bowel disease or IBD consists of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. You see, okay? And step one loves to test the differences and compare both. So Crohn's disease, in terms of location, it's gonna affect any part of the GI tract, from mouth to anus. Commonly terminal ileum, okay? And colon, but terminal ileum is special for Crohn's disease. It causes what we call skip lesions, because we have, you know, healthy areas, and it spares the rectum usually. In terms of pathology for Crohn's disease, it's a transmural inflammation. That's why it can complicate with fistulas, strictures, abscesses. Remember that, transmural inflammation. In terms of gross morphology, remember the cobblestone mucosa, creeping fat, ball wall, you know, thickening, like string sign. Linear ulcers, fissures as well. Microscopically, in Crohn's disease, you're gonna see non caseating granulomas. In terms of complications, think about malabsorption, malnutrition, colorectal cancer risk, increase in patients with pancolitis, fistulas, enterovesical, enterocutaneous fistulas, and perianal disease. The patient will present with diarrhea that may or may not be bloody diarrhea, okay? Weight loss and abdominal pain. In terms of extra intestinal manifestations for Crohn's disease, the patient may present a rash called pyoderma gangrenosum, may present also erythema nodosum, eye inflammation, apscleritis, uveitis, kidney stones, which will be calcium oxalate stones, and also gallstones, okay? We can treat this patient with steroids if they are, you know, in a flare, azathioprine, you can use antibiotics as well if needed, ciprofloxacin, metronidazole, especially in the flare, and in severe cases, we may need biologics, like infliximab, adalimumab. Now let's talk about ulcerative colitis quickly. Location, it's limited to the colon and rectum. So it forms a continuous lesions. It always involves and starts and involves the rectum and goes upwards. The pathology involves the mucosal and submucosal inflammation only. So it's not transmural as Crohn. And in terms of gross morphology, we're gonna see a friable mucosa, pseudopolyps, buzzword for you, pseudopolyps. We have also loss of austra, like a lead pipe sign. If you see the x-ray, you see like a lead pipe sign. And microscopically, very classic, crypt abscesses. Crypt abscess, no granulomas or no occasional granulomas like Crohn's, crypt abscess. What are the complications of ulcerative colitis? Fulminant colitis is possible, toxic megacolum and perforation. It's also possible in Crohn's disease, but it's more common in ulcerative colitis. Patients also have increased risk of colorectal cancer, especially also with pancolitis as well. In terms of symptoms, the patient will present with bloody diarrhea, which is painful, okay? And the classic extra intestinal manifestations are number one, sclerosing cholangitis. Primary sclerosing cholangitis, classic for your tests. It is associated with P. anchor positive. And how do we treat it to finish? You can use mesalamine, you can use 6 mercaptopurin. Remember that? In severe cases, we might need to use infliximab or colectomy. Total colectomy can cure ulcerative colitis. So step one, key takeaways for you guys. Crohn's disease equals skip lesions, transmural inflammation, cobblestone mucosa, non caseating granulomas, and fistulas. Right? Did you get that? Ulcerative colitis, continuous lesions, mucosal and submucosal only, crypt abscesses, lead pipe colon, and high risk of colon cancer. The diarrhea in Crohn's may be bloody or non-bloody, but in ulcerative colitis, it's always bloody and painful, okay? In terms of treatment, Crohn's, steroids, biologics, antibiotics, ulcerative colitis, mesalamine, colectomy in severe cases. So know how to differentiate these two. Step one, we'll test it, okay? Save this for review afterwards and share with your friends also studying for step one.